Hello and uh, welcome to a very very interesting research work. Uh, I teach many students from you know various backgrounds and when I look into it that how the recruitment process is uh, that yes things change quickly and especially in technical world in technology I think it's since it's ever evolving technical recruitment has also has undergone a lot of change what technical recruiters want from engineering candidates especially because for last 6 years i am training rather uh, many engineering students and what i come to know is what is that which a recruiter seek i think that is basically not very very clear with the engineering students with the job aspirant with the job seekers the ever unanswered question which remains to be answered at all point of time is what is the industrial demand what is uh, that which the recruiters want their candidate to be and what is that which is stopping that uh, these engineering students not to fill in that gap so obviously if there is an industrial gap between the demand and the supply and this is widening that's the reason you have many engineers not getting their dream jobs it is not about dream jobs it is about how better we can understand the recruitment processes and align ourselves studying that comprehending it and maybe practice it for good time and precisely that is one major concern why i have come up with one such great episode covering what technical recruiters want from an engineering students so what we have done is we have uh, went on to ask around seven such recruiters who are into technical foray and and since the time is changing it it is for us to shed light on what companies look for in a candidate as a trainer it is my responsibility having a great interest and passion into training students for life skills and career skills transferable skills i think uh, i own this i owe this and that's the reason i have asked one straight away question what makes an engineer stand out from the applicant pool why few get selected why many not so uh, the first uh, actually recruiter is uh, emily 10 ak uh, emily is head of talent at bill zoom previously at a head hunting firm what emily has to say is talent teams and or are hiring managers often have to shift through hundreds of applicants per week hundreds of applicants keep coming every week and they need to shortlist go through it understand and shortlist so what they they want to tell us is even if our experience is amazing even if the candidates experience is amazing they have to present it in a very very succinct eye catching way what it means is now the resume is the first one which reaches the prospective employer so it has to convey the right meaning especially when you can can't rely you can't rely on your own brand name nobody knows Uh, who you are right so you need to put it subtly in a in a cv or in a resume or on a bio data whatever you call but a professional profile and make it appealing what emily goes on to explain is that they recommend designing resume to highlight promotions and long tenures and both are essential categorically they have put it that highlight promotions and long tenures that means wherever you have taken jump if you have taken responsibility which is higher than the previous one the second thing is your consistency for how long you have been working in that company it needs also a greater showcase so both the things your promotions of any kind any level any responsibility rise and the time that you have stayed in the company that consistency both need to be mentioned and make sure that they have included the same language the same lingo as it appears in the job description because it is to map and match what is the requirement or the prerequisite of the job and what is that that job aspirant possesses lastly keep following up 
uh, what emily says is do not lose hope keep keep following up even if it is no from the hiring side the second recruiter that we talk about is temi wu recruiter at remix previously at clover health what temi has to say is eq and self awareness we all know eq stands for emotional quotient so we need to have good amount of emotion or empathy been shown to others as long as we are working with human beings and the second is self awareness how many times we are aware about ourselves what what this means is how much you are aware of yourself that you are job ready and how many skills you possess that the job description demands if you possess both of them and if you possess in a good degree i think you have a greater chance to score in the i temi vu temi vu says i enjoy working with people who have depth of thought so it's important to me to find engineers who can self reflect on how previous work experiences have shaped what they value now and what they are looking for next such leap in their career right anyone can do a generic lip service wanting a collaborative transparent no bs environment with cool smart people working on cool hard problems now this gives uh, uh, temi who confidence they will be a positive and collaborative contributor to the team at a small collaborative startup maybe at remix she says is that these traits are critical whereas it may not be that critical for other company but when it comes to remix uh, temi who says that yes collaborative work that means how you gel with the other team members and whether you are a team player or not i think these key skill sets are very very important it may seem like a common sense but having a deep enthusiastic and genuine interest in some aspect of the company would also be of great interest for example whether the company's mission company's product technical know how challenges work environment it it can be anything if the candidate is is actually prepared if they have gone through the website of the company and knows about it and maybe align it to their own thought then i think it will it will really go deep last thing temi who says is uh, ask hard questions either way so if if, if you are an interviewer i think you uh, you can you always have something hard to ask but if you are an interviewee an engineer so i think you need to ask really hard questions third in the league we have recruiter etmar goldmans director of people at grammarly the company which is well known previously at alt school and opawa etmar goldman says is do your homework and come prepared study the company company website i just mentioned that its history its presence its spread what they are into and overall culture of the company and what's it's it's trying to do at this point in time right study the people maybe who will be interviewing you so let's say if there is a panel sitting you should be aware like who all are there whether they are senior executives whether it is the hr head along with the operations or technical head so that you get comfortable of knowing who all are there and maybe prepare that extra study their role and maybe brush up on the knowledge and skills they are likely uh, likely going to be needed for that job so you need to go through all all the profile the position that you are applying for the job description and job specifications very minutely understand them understand the profile of the interviewer the panel and maybe that will trigger you to prepare better and finally prepare to interview well and be interviewed so it's either side it's not alone with the interviewee try as we must to create an interview experience that mirrors the actual work experience actual work experience the time constraints will always remain that interviewing will be a little different yes if in case if you want it to to be a very very practical kind of an interview then it might take time but let it take time because it's about the company the investment of the resource identifying the right one becomes very very important 
Help us see that you are the perfect fit for the role of being the best version of yourself. In case if the candidate has potential, has the ability, has the right attitude, I think we should give enough time. The fourth in the frame is Sarah Arcolio, talent partner at Rainforest QA, previously in operations. So one coming with not only technical background, but also from the operations front. First, always look for alignment to the skill sets and level of experience we call out in the job description. So again, the job description, the keyword coming back. What it clearly says is alignment of skill sets. So what has been asked, does it match the resume? Does it match the, the quality of that candidacy, that candidate? If it is matching, I think it's worth calling them for the second round. Uh, the tone of the resume should be in the very modest you know you are you are going to get a job you are asking for a job you are applying for a job so it has to be in a in a very crispier mode it has to be the tone of of you know modesty humility generosity and it is it should be very very subtle so a lot of courteousness mannerism and professionalism to be seen at the same time the tone has to be right positive Anybody who is coming needs to align the company's culture and value, how important it is. So Sarah says that it is not only the, uh, the skill sets, but also the, the values and the culture to be met. Sarah says that I like a straightforward one page resume where it is obvious that the candidate has spent time conveying his or her skills and experience while also talking about who they are. So you might be coming from various backgrounds irrespective of your backgrounds what they you have to offer to the organization i think that is that is what they are looking into at the same time uh, the format of the resume right the word choice summary or the objective statement conciseness do not elaborate continuity you uh, you are you have something to speak one after the another so let it be the educational qualification and then maybe a technical qualification if it is different and technical skills that you offer to the company with the right kind of a project and the internship that you have done with the skill sets that you match and the participation overall if you have nothing to offer at least stick to the basic basic job description subheads and try to incorporate in your resume right attention to the detail is one good thing because you you if you are process focused then only the result are going to be successful right a short cover letter a cover letter becomes very very important here and cover letter nowadays is something which is playing a very vital role because you you must you might you know uh, be intelligent to cover whatever there is in the job description in your resume but your cover letter gives you an additional advantage to communicate effectively with your prospective employer so please don't undermine the importance of cover letter first paragraph of, of your cover letter says about the reference the second one your strength your experience your appreciation letter your reward anything that you might have fetched working uh, as an intern or uh, doing a project sarah says that think of your resume like a poem edit out whatever that is not necessary not required now the students have so much of qualification and certification done nowadays but is it necessary to be incorporated uh, incorporated in the resume if it is not if it is not desired in the job description please do not write it this might include uh, words that are fluff jargons saying something multiple times getting repetitive tasks and responsibility that are table stakes just for the heck of it if you can avoid please avoid it right also connect the dots for the recruiters let's interpret what the job description asks and can we you know bridge that that dots exactly into our own words those keywords or buzzwords that you can possibly do it in your resume i think that is what is asked right the next in line we have greg banks recruiting manager at digit previously a technical recruiter at course hero candidates stand out if they clearly define what they designed developed or and or contributed to the projects they either owned or worked on simple so technical recruitment has a lot to do with not only the projects that, that they do, 
the size uh, the scale and the scope of project that they are doing however small or big they are you need to mention say what the team did as the whole to show that you understand the bigger picture of what your team was contributing to the company meaning that if you are working as a team you need to showcase that you are a team player you are disciplined right now this gets very serious if if a serious question comes if a question comes from the recruiter that uh, give us an example of how good team player you are and if we are trying to figure out there i think we lose on time we lose on the opportunity ultimately elaborate on the work you have done to demonstrate your ability to communicate your thoughts to others if you have a plan and if you are able to express it with in a team i think then it's a great sign of leadership also candidates that pay close attention to the visual representation of their experiences resume set themselves apart so practical is something which is desired by almost all the recruiters so how do you get uh, into practical world is if you have good amount of internship if you have an exposure to the project if you have done a part time or a full time job i think you are in a position to answer to many a question besides your linkedin your digital physical resume needs to stand out on your behalf so time is changing what uh, greg talks about is is there a better representation of yours as a digital form of resume i think the world is changing and we need to realize that video resume is here to stay for a longer longer time and many 90% of the recruiters today they ask for video resume just because of this corona effect this pandemic effect i think they were not receiving but now many candidates are getting ready for video resume and it's a wonderful thought because at one go these recruiters are able to identify how confident how knowledgeable how job ready you are how professional you are and by looking at them it gets minimum time reaction time to get back to a candidate and recruit this representation has to be concise clear and organized description of the experience that you have undergone and it speaks volume about the candidate watch for uh, always have a very close watch if you are doing a, a maybe a physical resume for a spelling and grammar written communication displays an engineer's ability to code clearly uh, along with the whole team the recruitment team has found that candidate with sloppy or unarticulated resumes uh, do not fare good chance to score even the second level of interview right and even after seeing the you know conducting interviews and having plan a and plan b test how good or bad the candidate is the data, the data clearly showed that candidates who had untidy resumes fared less chance than those with the well written ones beautifully said i think that is where we need to work harder that is where we need to spend time and make our resumes sound absolutely professional Next in the line is Lana Herzig, technical recruiter at Dia and Company, previously at Cortex. So varied experiences, and these recruiters are telling what all which is practical and which is now contemporary for every engineering student to take it up seriously. Now, passion and purpose gets very important for Lana. Uh, Lana talked to many engineers who are qualified for the roles in a team. Oh, and the various skill sets they they possess, and they have the tech stack mastery of. However, what makes an engineer really stand out from the entire lot is perhaps these two things. That is the passion and the purpose. If a recruiter is talking to a 25 or a 26 year old engineer, then there kind there has to be certain kind of enthusiasm and passion shown for that domain, that industry. and that is what elena is talking about making a difference in the world or affecting change then you need to have that kind of an enthusiasm and passion at dia and company we are successfully disrupting a vastly undeserved market of plus size fashion 67% of the women in the us they are almost kind of looked down they are not at all considered when it comes to this fashion plus size fashion our engineering and data teams play a critical role in our company and their work ultimately helps us to positive change the lives of plus size women all over the us so this means clearly that 67% of the women whom they are catering to as this fashion product they are keeping in mind that plus size and they are changing their altering their product 
and it is basically coming from where the research and the engineers who are put to task last in the frame is michael cheng head of the technical talent at alto and previously at cisco meraki the most important thing michael says is look at is the candidate's most recent work experience whatever you bring to the table to the organization now is you know is of prime importance than what you were in your past so past if you are harping on it will not uh, it is not going to you know fetch any results either for you or for recruiters what company or role they are coming from how detail are their descriptions do they note quantifiable or impactful outcomes that demonstrate strong ownership michael says it all it's it says that how much you own your work how much passionate you are to speak on the last experience of your job our hiring philosophy at alto leans on hiring for experience as opposed to potential so what they basically look at is the last experience how good bad or ugly it was not at what the candidate you know possess as potential thus an engineer's most recent projects and responsibilities are most applicable to what they would bring to their team today if they join and they are less concerned about the person's education at work whether they are 3 years 5 years 10 years or 15 years of experience michael goes on to explain this uh, if we are looking for a senior engineer to be a hands on in professional contributor but a candidate has been a pure people manager for last 2 years that that candidate is certainly not considered if a candidate decided to switch careers and has become a high performing engineer working on similar challenges coding in the last 3 years and man manager too so that candidate will be an ideal to at least given a chance to get screen so in all we have seen around 7 recruiters and we have seen so many good points that these recruiters as an industry demands and these are the kind of most contemporary demand which if the employee the job aspirant or job seeker if they carefully note it then it would certainly be very easy for not only start preparing with their resume but also try and understand what the job descriptions meant you know how to seriously consider about taking that internship and project develop your skill sets which which all is getting mentioned here from the recruiters and most important is show that confidence enthusiasm and passion towards your job i would definitely say that if one lacks this let's start with these three things passion enthusiasm and knowing what is the right skill i hope i have made my point very very clear because these are the mncs what exists in the global environment exists locally also what you need to understand is if you can do it if it, if this means something serious to you if this means something as a prelude to you to work on it and maybe evolve and transform better do it now because it's still time for us to change it's still time to increase the numbers of recruitment of 17 lakhs engineers that are passing out every year only 3 lakhs jobs are seen but i i don't want to believe in that because we have more good engineers who can be possibly if understanding the the gap now now since we have spelled this gap we have understood this gap if we are able to bridge this i'm sure many will qualify for a big big dream jobs i hope this serves purpose to many if it did pass this on to many who are sitting on the fence and may be preparing for their dream career it's not about job it is about career thank you and best wishes to all